guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to jump into my most productive bin, the one that gets me the castings the fastest. So if that is the reason why you do it, stick around and check out this bin. So we're going to start at the beginning, at the top of the bin. Now this is three 10 gallon totes. I'll put the metric below and it has been going for about 60 days. It has been five weeks since we checked in on it and we did give it a healthy feeding over here but let's i'm going to start collecting up all of the uh, long-term food to put in the very bottom if you are uh, new to this bin or new to the channel this particular diy bin is three 10 gallon totes that have about two pounds maybe three pounds of the mix that is red wigglers european night crawlers and blue worms now they do seem to cycle food faster in this bin than in my other bins, which I think is, is strange because I don't think the volume of this is as much as I do have in other bins. So looking at this, they look like they're doing a great job of working through the bedding. Now this is my prepared bedding where I prepare it a couple weeks in advance. I can link a video to, at the end to the prepared bedding. It's just a way to help the worms go through the bedding a little bit faster and helps them, you know, basically gets the microbes rolling so that they can consume it faster. Now this is a avocado pit and they take about six months to break down, but that's fine with me. They can hang out in there. What else have I got to do? All right, now we're getting over to the other side here where we did that feeding. And if I remember correctly, it was pretty gross. So we added a lot more bedding to cover it up, which is one trick that you can use to keep bugs out of your bin. If the, uh, the little flyers and stuff can't smell it, then they have no reason to go landing on your bin. So if you have something particularly stinky, you're gonna wanna cover that up with, you know, at least five or six inches of uh, new bedding. Now, because I have so many bins, I don't get in here every single week, which is probably a good thing. I think most new farmers, new worm farmers tend to get into their bins more often than they should because they wanna see what's going on. And uh, sometimes that can be um, not good for the worms. If you check on them every couple of days, you know, the possibility exists that you might be tempted to add more, you know, food or bedding or something that they don't need. Also, they don't particularly enjoy it when you disturb them a whole bunch. So um, I disturb them a lot, but infrequently. Well, it looks like all of that food is gone on this top layer with the exception of the avocado shell. So let's uh, take a look at the next layer down. Okay, this middle layer is always the fastest layer. It's the Goldilocks zone. It is completely protected from the outside. The moisture tends to stay uh, exactly perfect the way the worms love it. It doesn't ever dry out. So that's, you know, one of the good things about this portion of the bin is that it is wonderful. It doesn't get too wet because basically there are holes below here that anything can go through. So it does not get too wet and it doesn't get too dry like the top where it's exposed to the air. Plus also if they don't want to be here they can decide to go down to the lower end. I'm not really sure what this is. Hmm, we'll put that on the lower level. Looks like it's going to be a long-term food. All right, on to the next layer. This is the bottom layer that is where I keep most of my very long-term food. Now, if you remember last time, I was having a hard time deciding whether or not I should grow this or not. And it looks like it's quit. Worm, worms made the decision for me, but we put a lot of the long-term food down here because it does stay a lot more wet down here. And you can tell they're making quick work of these avocado pits. And let's see, they also made the decision about me growing a new mango tree. No soup for me. Oh, wait a minute. I spoke too fast. There may be soup yet. But this is only half. I don't, I don't know, what do you think? No, 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 I have, I have enough. Stop, no more. Oh, but wait, this one's actually got a stem. How do I, how do I say no to this? The worms are working. No, no, no. The 
the corn cobs here. Let's let's look at them. Don't look at the plants, Sam. It's fine. You can tell they're getting into it. These are about a four month to five month food. And so you can tell they're cycling very nicely down here. We're going to add the long term food from up above so that the concentration of moisture that happens down here can help out get this long term food to cycle more quickly. Not happening. It's not hide. Okay, so this lower bin, we don't feed this lower bin. I basically just let them work on the long term food down here. And if it does get too wet, then I usually grab a handful of this and put it on the top so that I can kind of equilibrate the moisture. All right, putting back the second bin here. And I think everything looks great here. I don't really want to, you know, screw up something that looks good. So I'm going to leave them alone and we're going to go back to the top. Okay, so I think I'm just going to, you know, get this all homogenous again. We did feed over on that one side. And... So everything's looking great for a bin that's about two months. This is an example of paper that sticks together if it's not worked in with the coconut coir or some castings. So what we're going to do is they're going to get another good size feeding, but I am going to change the side that they're feeding on so that it can drip down to the lower levels. All right. But I don't think I need more bedding. I keep saying that, but yet I keep adding more. All right, this time, seriously, we're not getting more bedding. But we are getting the leftovers of me making salsa and tomato sauce. So for those of you who are new and are thinking, oh my God, she just put in three pounds of tomatoes and onions and peppers, the horror. If you go back to looking at my older videos, I have proved time and time again that the worms are more than capable of handling this. In a bin that has a rich ecosystem of microorganisms as well as springtails and mites and isopods you know they will go through this and help the worms out and when the worms are ready to get in here i'm telling you if we get in here in time there will be a massive worm ball in with these onions and tomatoes and peppers and some of these are red peppers these are jalapenos and they are going to love it anyway let's get them some bedding see i told you i was not gonna listen to myself there we go so basically all that food has been covered up with a couple of inches of prepared bedding and basically the worms will move in when they're ready they can hang out in here and do whatever they were doing before I irritated them this morning which one is your fastest cycling bin what does it look like and what kind of worms do you have in it i'd really be interested to hear your comments below if you like this video give it a muddy thumbs up if you're not a member of my worm family click that subscribe button and if you want to know what i'm doing when i'm doing it ring that bell icon all right guys thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody have a good day